Hello, my name's Harry and welcome to the third video in a series of videos looking at the 4191A impedance analyzer. In this video we'll calibrate the 4191A using the uh, bespoke calibration standards. Um, so we'll just walk you through that, that process. Um, it's not a great photograph but in the center of that picture there you can see the APC7 termination and the open and the short. So these were provided, these are bespoke pieces provided with the machine. In the ideal world, these would be the parts you'd obtain. Uh, you can use alternatives, but obviously with reduced accuracy. So uh, to calibrate the machine, um, we've previously we've given a save location to the software. We've opened the connection. We've reset the machine to a default condition. And we've set the frequency range of between one and a thousand megacycles and uh, we've set the fringe capacitance to 0 0.82 and electrical length to 0. Okay, so that's all we need to do to set the machine in the configuration to calibrate. Okay, so I'll just remove what's on the device just now and we'll attach the first of the calibration standards. In this case it's a short. Okay, we hit the cal tab. A little reminder to say we're going to erase the previous cal data and that the new cal frequency range will be 1 to 1000 megs. We're happy with that. We're just going to confirm that the fringe capacitance needs to be set to 0 0.082, which it does. And uh, I've attached the short, so we'll tell it the short's on the machine and we'll run the cal. Now, the cal will be 51 steps. It's always 51 steps in a calibration, irrespective of the step size that you've set in the software. So uh, we'll just pause the recording there and we'll return when it's uh, approaching the end of that sweep. Okay, welcome back. So that's just, just approaching the end of its sweep and that's it recorded the calibration information from the short. Uh, we'll, next we'll give it a, an open term. Uh, the reason for the open term is you want to have, uh, you want to define the fringe capacitance And we'll run the cal. Again, we'll pause and return at the end of the sweep. So welcome back. So this is it approaching the end of the sweep. So again, as I said, it's 51 measurement points across the frequency range that you have defined. And that's that sweep complete. And now finally, we'll attach the termination. Again, we tell the software that it's a 50 ohm termination, and we run the cal. Again, we'll pause and come back at the end. Okay, welcome back. So this is it approaching the end of the calibration sequence. Here we go, and it's uh, there's been no errors reported, and uh, we can now exit the calibration routine. And that's it, and you can see up the top here it's got the calibration date and time and the frequency range of that the machine was calibrated for. Okay, so you're now ready to make measurements. Uh, you can obviously make a measurement when any of these uh, have the information displayed as any of these parameters, uh, but for Z plots that we'll be using shortly, uh, we'll need to have the information displayed in resistance and reactive impedance, reactive ohms. Okay, so we'll stick with that for now. Again, we'll be making a frequency sweep between one and a thousand megs. And one meg steps, you'll see there will be a thousand, but if we make it, say, 20 megs. Now, if we make a sweep now, we'll have um, the, the, the frequency markers will coincide exactly with the calibration points and you'll obtain the maximum accuracy from the machine. Okay, so that's the machine calibrated. In the next video, I'll attach uh, an unknown device and we'll do a frequency sweep and then we'll display that information in Z plots, which is the ultimate ultimate goal. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.